Good morning, my name is Paul Raiva and I am from Poland and it's great honor for me today to have Professor Op Opria Lager from Nijmegen, Netherlands. Good morning and thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you very much. Uh, we will talk today about mostly about PSMA uh, PET diagnostic. Therefore, I would like to ask you for which purposes we should use PSMA PET imaging in 2024? Well, as we know, uh, PSMA, prostate-specific membrane antigen, is a type 2 transmembrane protein and um, I'm very happy as a member of the EAU guidelines uh, for prostate cancer uh, to mention that there are two main indications for using PSMA in clinical practice. First of all, we have the initial staging of prostate cancer, mainly for the patients at high risk prostate cancer. And then we have the second indication uh, being the biochemical relapse. The moment that the patient uh, was previously treated uh, by radical prostatectomy or by radiation therapy, having a relapse of PSA. And then uh, we are actually with this PSMA PET tracer looking at the substrate. Do we expect to have a local recurrence or the presence of lymph node metastasis or distant metastasis? So these are the two main indications for using PSMA PET in clinical practice. Actually, it's very interesting because I think this was this this year there was a change that we, we should actually perform PSMA PET in high risk disease uh, in in uh, prostate cancer. Would you could you explore it more? Like why not conventional imaging? First of all, I think uh, that it's important to mention that uh, for this year we'll also have somehow a, a change in the guidelines that we are currently more using and having more evidence uh, for the importance in the. Uh, category of patients having intermediate uh, risk of prostate cancer but with an unfavorable prognosis so in these cases we might also use PSMA PET. Uh, I also uh, recommend and I think it's very important to underline this that we should only perform a PSMA PET if this will influence the management of the patient. If we don't plan to do anything, to change anything in the uh, management, that we shouldn't uh, perform a PSMA PET. It's really a waste of time and money to do this. And then um, it is uh, also important to, to use PSMA PET probably uh, in the clinical practice because it was shown that it is uh, having an uh, superior uh, accuracy uh, when we compared with conventional imaging. And by conventional imaging, of course, I mean uh, computed tomography scans and bone scans. And the pro-PSMA, the study from our friends from Australia, from uh, Michael Hoffman, uh, showed us the superiority of this uh, modern imaging modality, PSMA uh, PET, 27% uh, uh, more accurate than conventional imaging, uh, with no adverse effects and also with a lower uh, radiation burn, which is really an important aspect when we uh, diagnose the patients. So thank you very much for your answer. And I have another question. Could you please tell me, uh, like in the future, do you see any other indications for PSMA PET in diagnostics? Uh, I think one of the main indications that will uh, be in the future, it is the response evaluation. So we can use the PSMA PET to evaluate the response uh, after initiating different types of therapies. It's very important to know if the patient responds to therapy so that you can continue the line of uh, therapy or if the patient is not responding, if we see that there is progression of disease, then we can switch to another therapy. And PSMA PET will guide us and especially you, the urologist and the clinicians, um, will be guided on continuing or stopping or switching to another more uh, efficient uh, therapy. So indeed, this uh, is an important aspect. But I also have to mention that that it's very important once you start um, the evaluation of therapy with one type of uh, PSMA tracers, and fortunately we have some types, it's important to continue with the same because as we probably know, we have the gallium uh, uh, and also the 18F fluorinated products, but there are some variations in between and there are also tracers known to have uh, non-specific bone activity. So once you will uh, start with one type of tracer and then you'll continue with something that it might have uh, introducing a bias like non-specific uh, activity, uh, we will have different results. So keep on continuing and scanning with the same type tracer. And do you see any role of AI in, in molecular diagnostics in PSMA PET diagnostics? Yeah. In the future? 
Well, we are very keen and actually we are trying and we are in the beginning of the artificial intelligence era in the prostate cancer with molecular imaging, with PSMA PET. And there are some promising results. I think we really need to continue our work. But it's again important that uh, if we want to generate good data, if we want to, to collect good results from artificial intelligence, we will have to harmonize the protocols. So use the same protocols, the same dose, the same uh, incubation time. Because if we are not doing like this, then we will compare different uh, things and we'll get erroneous results just because we are not um, providing the good information that we should need. So for artificial intelligence purposes, it's more important than ever that uh, we are using the same protocols. So regarding uh, standardization, could you please tell me more about Spark initiative? Because I know you are in involved in Yes, yes, I'm very happy and honored to be a part of this Spark initiative. And what is a Spark initiative? It's uh, actually an uh, multidisciplinary intercontinental uh, collaboration uh, in which uh, colleagues from urology, from medical oncology, but also from nuclear medicine and uh, radiology are involved. And why is this? Because we saw the last, um, I'd say, seven to eight years, an enormous uh, boost in the number of guidelines on how to report PSMA. We started with PSMA rats, we then have the EPSMA guidelines, the PROMISE uh, uh, guidelines, the version one, version two. So we see that there is an enormous interest, but there are different initiatives. And now it's a moment also to harmonize all these protocols and to try to speak the same language with the, our colleagues from the clinic. And that's why it's very important. This has a multidisciplinary character. We are doing together with uh, experts from Europe, from uh, US and also from Australia, trying to identify what are the most important elements when reporting. And we are also dividing our works on the initial staging, on the restaging, on the advanced prostate cancer. So at the end, I think this will be really uh, something where all the specialities will benefit and uh, we hope that finally we'll uh, interpret the result in the same way. And so how do you see the future of this field? What is your... Of course, as a nuclear medicine physician, I can always uh, say and only say that uh, the future is bright. I, I won't say the future is radioactive because uh, I don't want to, to say this, but it's really uh, an important uh, thing, yes, we are having now this PSMA pet and we are uh, exploring also the Terranostics uh, ability. So you can use it on one hand to diagnose patients, but you can use this wonderful molecule also to uh, link to alpha or beta particles and to, to generate a new therapeutic modality. So we create, we have now the radio uh, nuclide therapy with uh, PSMA. And I think this is uh, an important new kid on the block is entering the therapeutic arena of prostate cancer. But really the future will be in this personalization uh, era, the combination of therapy. I don't think that a patient will be in the future uh, treated and cured only by using one type of therapy, but we should be able to combine radionuclide therapy with hormone therapy, with a type of chemotherapy, with some other promising therapies in the uh, prostate cancer. And then I think one plus one will be three and our patients will be really benefiting from this uh, therapy. So thank you very much for your, for your time, for your interview. It was really insightful uh, and also very thankful for all the, for all the listeners to our, to our uh, interview. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for me.